going on everybody welcome to the podcast we got something a little bit different for you this week we're dipping in to that patreon bucket so we started a patreon a few months ago to tackle some behind the scenes stuff things that we talk about before the podcast gets going a little bit of that warm-up conversation that has these really cool nuggets in it and also some things that are just a little bit deeper sometimes they're a little bit sensitive not the right word but just deeper deeper is the best word that i can use so consider this a little free sample brought to you by our patreon members thank you to all our patreon members out there appreciate you so much this is what goes on over there so we hope you enjoy if it's interesting to you you can find a link down below to sign up and become a member yourself it's five bucks a month not that much it's about the price of one cup of coffee every month you can you can live the dream with us all right let's get into it peace that's your new inspo dude i was watching my friend wes who is a legit musical genius he's like incredibly talented he can <sighs> fucking play anything he was just he was basically the guy who was wrote all the main hooks for the the little math rock band that your peeps i used to be in yeah he was like i mean everybody in that band was a way better musician than me but ev- like he You're was still in he was like the guy and his daughter was playing with that op1 i was like oh she's got on one instagram yeah she was making her own there's a lot to learn for that thing stuff and she i think she i see her playing like eight different instruments probably just like her dad can play That's like really anything cool. i'm he, starting to see the vision of how to use it it's gonna take it's kind of a trip because you see how all these people use it, right? And at first you're like, okay, I have to use it like that. And you're like, no, I have to use it how it works for me. So like everybody starts with a drum beat and that's just not going to work for me. I have to start with some sort of like melody and bass line. Yeah. And then I have to add it later. And it's actually been, that's I think why the Kanye shit's so interesting to me. There are many parts of his music where there's no beat in the background at all. He's using all the melodies and the bass lines and all these other things to make the beat, and then it beat drops. I've never made music like that, but when I have Maybe played either. with like, um, fuck, like whatever recording things I've had, and I, I would do the same thing. I would just drop a beat in, but then I felt like the beat never matches up with the music. Well, it just constricted for me. me a little bit or mm. something like that. It's like once you establish like your time frame, at yes. least for me, because I'm not super. The tempo throws me off. You know, and it's like, okay, it, it feels like it puts you in a box where yep. it's like you've got this is happening, this is happening, yes. this is you like put stuff that fits right. inside of this. And then if Don't it's going to loop, go it has to hit box. perfect yeah, like or else it doesn't it go work. Again. Yes. Whereas if you start with like a melody. And then you put the beat or in wherever you want. You know what I mean? Or like a hook or yes. whatever, just something that feels a totally. certain kind of way. I went down a fucking musical rabbit hole yesterday Did too, you? dude. Oh, yeah. I would just Let's just make an album, you and I. It'll be weird. It'd be sick. Well, I was looking at. Uh, I I went down this rabbit hole of traditional Russian folk music. Oh, dude! I saw some of that at World Music Festival. There's Did some you? really cool it's, instruments with like crazy shit. Yeah. So there's one that's called like I'm gonna pronounce it fucking terribly wrong, but it's like the balalalaika or yes something. It's like a big triangular shaped yep. looking guitar that has three strings. Yeah. And they have a bass version or whatever. I watch somebody play that and live, three person band. It's pretty sick. Yeah. And then there's one song, Koro Koro Baniki, classic, which is basically the not basically, it is the theme from Tetris. It's like Tetris oh, really? theme A. I mean, like the Tetris. Exactly. So that's an old Russian folk song. I think they did play that actually yeah. live. Yeah. Yeah. So that's like one of the most classic Russian classic. folk songs ever. And they just ripped that for Tetris. But there's like a, a band that I like that did a cover of it. And I was like, oh, dude, it's actually kind of. It's kind of sick, like the actual traditional shit, like yes. with the Russian instruments and like the accordion and everything. It yeah. just sounds so dope. And I was like, oh, I want to listen to more like weird stuff. And then I went and down this rabbit hole. I was like, what did I listen to when I worked at Ritual? And mm. I started listening to like going way back, like Beirut's first yep. album, like Gulag Orchestra. Yeah. And that's kind of got this it's ties like deep Russian yep. vibe to it. I don't know where the dude's from or anything. I don't think that's he's from definitely there, what he's drawn on though. People get their inspiration. It's kind of a trip. And I was like, I'm just so sick of the normal shit that I'm hearing. I'm like, not into it. It doesn't make me feel any kind of way. No, it's cool to hit. I feel you. And I don't know I what's good. You. I need someone to tell me what's good. 
No, nah, I don't think you do. I just think there's too much music out there, and it's hard to find it. And then you have well, to like, use the saying. time surfing. That's why I mean, like, oh. I need someone to tell me, like, what. Then good luck. Yeah, like, point me like, in the right direction. Because that was one of the cool things about working there at the time is like everybody was in that in the pocket. Like, well, and you had to go find it. That's and the like thing. people were like, "Oh, dude, we're gonna play this." I'm like, "What the fuck is this?" Right. You know, and the, all those things were happening around that time, and I was like, "Oh, dude, this is kind of shaping my life." Mm-hmm. And now I don't have anything. I don't have like a like a certain kind of music that I feel is like shaping this era uh-huh, of my life. Uh-huh. And I kind of want that. What was the last album? Cause I have a very clear picture of the last album that like had a, sh- like a, the proper shaping of like a, a transitional phase in life. Like which one comes to mind for you? Dude, I don't even know. That's, that's what I'm bummed you don't about. Have, okay. I don't like, you can't think back to the one where you're like, that was the one I listened to kind of on repeat. <sighs> Actually, I guess I have two of them. I have two. So there's, their the graduation album from Kanye I listened to for like that's why it's so okay, weird for me yeah. to come full circle to Kanye because after that album he had the one when we were living in Stanley with like Monster and all the lights and that was that was like a part of life where some new stuff was happening but the graduation album was like a time like dude Colby and I we had like gone to shows that album came out we were connecting on it I remember like staying up all night doing 24-hour shifts listening to it on repeat and then like a bunch of life stuff happening, transitioning to Santa Cruz. Like it was all kind of through that time frame. Yeah. And I listened to that album a lot. And then the next one was the Kingdom, is it not Kingdom Come, um, the Jay-Z uh, Justin Timberlake album came out. And that was right around when we had Izzy. And so that was another, those are like the two most recent that were like, this is significant life stuff in chunks. Yeah. See, okay. I was trying to think more recent, but yeah, I think the last... I think that's why I keep diving into that ritual era shit. Cause like that was your last big, that like, was my last, I mean, it wasn't my last big life change, but no. it was the last time where I felt like music was heavily like, like a part associated of associated with yeah. part of it. Cause there's all that stuff. Like, you know, what was going on right then? Like, you know, for party vibes or whatever girl, yeah. girl talk was like starting oh, yeah. to pop. There was like that Beirut stuff. There was this yeah. band that we used to listen to. I think the dude's name he used to be called Final Fantasy, but he changed the name to just his name. Maybe it's like Doug. Owen Pratt or Ben Pratt. I don't know. It's just some guy, like yeah. super sick violin. It's Ben Platt and before he got vocals, super famous. And he's fucking awesome. So we were listening to that. But then at around that same time, um, Dylan, who I used to work with, he like came in to the cafe and he's all dude, fucking little Wayne's new mm, album mm-hmm. just dropped and it is sick and I was that like, was the Amelia on. one right it was Carter three yeah and I was that was like, an album damn this shit is a fucking hard because mm-hmm. I never listened to Lil Wayne before no that was I mean a he wasn't album. super popular or anything you know he was a guy for sure but that, that album I think jumped him though right because that's yeah. the one where he like connected with the motto right afterwards where that was on that album I can't remember no that was before this was before the motto but this okay. like he had Jay-Z on that album uh-huh. um which was like a big Mr. Carter yeah is that where album you is that, that one yeah uh-huh. it's that album yeah three Pete it totally. starts with and then it's got like yeah. um a Millie, yeah, and then got money. It's so the T Pain's on it. Yeah, all this is just like slaps. Miss Officer, like, a big one. like yeah. there's so many hits on that album, and yeah. I was like, damn, this album's good. I don't even know who this guy is, but right. he's rapping like a motherfucker, and he's doing his. I don't know. He was that shit was hot, and that, that era I feel super connected to musically. Dude, I think after that, I kind of brainwashed myself or something. Like, I feel you. We all we had to get serious, and so serious. we stopped doing yeah. shit. That's it's, dumb as fuck. I was trying to think. Okay, what was going on? Like, what a waste when, of when when I was opening. Like, like from the time we started opening this, I'm like, okay, I remember the podcasts I was listening to. I was yeah, I was like well, trying to get real serious with the stuff I was doing, but I neglected this whole other. That's thing. That's the thing is, it's like. They need to be more in tandem because there's no, you, it's right. We should have been learning to get serious, but I don't, you don't like lose. There's just like this conjunction of inspiration and artistry and energy that comes from getting into music and, and really being into it and like hearing it. And it literally changes the way you think. And then to just kind of like shut that off because you have to like do something. I think it's a pretty normal story we tell ourselves. You like have to grow up and be professional. And it's not true, but at the same time, like, I totally understand why we did it. And we did need to focus up or else, you know, like our whole lives fall apart. I think the pain point's different. But the pain point's because different. Because that was the only time where 
it was all on us. Right. It's like this either works or it doesn't. And if it doesn't work, it's going to fucking suck. Right. Because then we, we got to do some shit we don't want to do. company that we worked at for a long time. Mm -hmm. We both know where we want to live. And there's nowhere else to really work in this place that we want to live, which yeah. is also the strange sidebar. It's, I remember talking to Jenny. She's like, well, you know, she always believed, but she's like, what would you do if this doesn't work out? You like go get a job at Blue Bottle or something? And I was like, I don't want to fucking do that. That sounds terrible. And I don't want to live in Oakland or San Francisco or, you know, right. I just don't. Like, I want to be in Santa Cruz. It feels, right right now mm -hmm. it's interesting to think about all that stuff and i yeah it's so crazy i don't even know how literally like the music fits the the the, the bill but at the same time i think i know that life is more rich when there's good music that you can kind of like get into with people and talk about it's almost like it's different than movies it's different than anything it's just like everybody can get, it's when you go to a concert right you share the energy that people want you come out of a concert almost always even if you don't love the band you go to like energize and that, that's what bring, brought me back mentally to world world music festival it's like nobody fam maybe like a quarter famous person or two show up it's a three-day thing in grass valley or auburn and it literally is just people from wherever who specialize in world music, right? So it's like a Russian band and a, so much music that's native to places that aren't here. And you go and I'm like, okay, I'll just go. Camping sounds fun. I'm not really sure I'm down with all of these hippie vibes. And then you go out there and you're like, whatever. You, it's yeah. just amazing music. And you connect to music because I think we just do and to creativity and people who are good at things. And the whole point is to bring people together. And there's just something about that that can happen in our world that, I mean, the best musicians do it. I think we just got it twisted somehow, or there's so much, I don't know. It's maybe there's so much of it now well, that think, you can't find it. Yeah, that's what I think. I think that it's this combination of things. So if, if I rewind, dude, this sounds fucked up, but part of it is getting older and it's weird to get older because when, so the older you get, sure, generally, the more responsibilities you have, the more things in your life are have to do's for sure. And the less, the less amount of free time you have. Right. So if I think back to when I was starting at ritual, all I had to do was do my job and make coffee. Right. And, and I was really, really passionate about it. And that's where everybody else was who worked there. Sure. And that's probably what was happening in Chico yeah. and in Santa get Cruz. Off and then like, whatever you want to do. I mean, you, you had do. a pretty gnarly job actually, but you had a lot of shit to do. <laughs> it's, it's fine. But, you got so much free time to explore the culture around you. So yeah. you're in your, you know, early to mid twenties surrounded by all these people who are in your same age range and they're discovering all these new things and they have time and energy to do it. So everybody's bringing this, uh, these like cultural nuggets to the table. Right. Like here's Bjorks, this CD, here's that CD, attacks, here's this, like, you know, you got RJ all D2. these things that people are kind of curating for you around you. Mm -hmm. Your cigarettes is new. Your now, you know, the amount of free time you have is very limited. It's just a lot less because you have a lot more responsibility and Your you're not space. in this zone where, you know, every, the bulk of the people that you hang around are kind of your age. And so those people also have less free time. They're kind of established in their ways. Like right. they, ha they know what they're doing. They know what they're going to do. Life is much more scripted. So you're not around all these people who are bringing in these new and interesting things in your life. It's like, that's why they, young people are so important right like, <clears throat> in a sense people are like oh there's no fucking responsibility it's like yes great right they have time to explore these things and they're creating new things because they're not so set in their ways right which is like is really inspiring to me because i'm there's so many ways that i'm set which i don't probably need to be mm -hmm. and i could benefit from like this little refresh right like we're kind of talking about through music sure but no one's really going out and getting anything mm. add to that now there's just how do you filter the just like you said the sheer amount of fucking volume of stuff that's right. out there it's bonkers like what am i going to do like search for new music that that doesn't even make sense like everybody makes music no you really do i mean it's true like <clears throat> i'll take time and i'll like go on a spotify or some shenanigans right and I will, I don't know what I'll search. I'll search something, right? And then I'll find a, a radio. It's, you know, they put the radio channel together based on whatever you yeah. wrote. And then I just kind of like skip through and then save stuff. But it's, but you're right. Like I don't have a lot of time. So I'll, oftentimes I'll like save a bunch of stuff based on like 20 seconds of listening. 
And then I come back to it and I'm all, oh, that actually kind of sucks. And then I have to delete it. But that has been like my my go-to. And I do stumble upon stuff that I enjoy, but it's still not ever quite as deep because oftentimes it's like one good song that gets semi-famous on the internet. And then yeah, the album's the not album actually sucks. very good. And like musically, maybe they're kind of talented, but you know what I'm saying? It's just like not, it's just different. It's totally a different world, but... Oh, man, music is a good thing. I'm with you on this. I, I mean, the OP one is, I'm going to find a way to express music for the first time ever, really. I haven't been able to. And I got a shit ton to learn, but I, I, I just kind of have to. It's something I've always wanted to do, and I have to do it. What's your moniker going to be? OP1 Kenobi? Mm. <laughs> is that going to be like Great question. Name, it's probably dude? taken for sure, right? For sure. I don't know, man. If it's not, though. Go it's going to be like... Young Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, dude. Tim Jr. Oh, man. Timo Pickens. Nah, I don't know. I haven't thought about that. I think I have to make the music first, and I have to learn that shit. There's so much on it, man. I have these weird, uh, this weird folder on my phone that is probably from a few years ago when I had this little moment of, oh, I'm going to play the guitar again, and I recorded all these strange Was that things. on the loop pedal? This was just me playing. Some of it was looping, okay. but most of it was just like, riffs and stony time signature hooks that i just recorded and i was like i don't know what i'm gonna do with this but it feels cool so i'm just gonna record 30 seconds of it and then yep. maybe i'll teach myself how to play it again later and you still have I, it right i you still said? have it. it's on my phone yeah it's just there and i don't know what to yeah i think a lot of it is must be bandwidth like what do you do like what do you, what what, well, am I, what am i gonna do three years ago or four years ago you know, we're in the first and second years of business. For sure. And then I'm like, oh, I got this kind of idea. Maybe I'll just take it to Z. It's like, no, I'm not taking shit to Z. I mean, a project Cat like Cloud. that's a proper project, right? Like, that's yeah, the thing. Even making a song sounds like a big thing a when you're building a business. I mean, it's a big thing anyway, right? I just had not off, but like six days where I was watching the girls where my wife was on a, a trip with some friends. Six whole days, right? With this brand new thing. And there's multiple parts to it. One, it's, it's overwhelming. So I'm like looking at YouTube. Like I'm getting better at every day. But I'm watching YouTube tutorials because there's a ton to do. And thankfully, Phil, who works for us, he has one. And he's good at it. And he's down to give me some lessons, which will be huge. And it'll jump me. But you can watch these tutorials where it walks you through everything. And there's just a lot to learn, right? It's, got, it's a four-track recorder, but you can actually take all four tracks and record them onto one, but you have to know how to do it with the thing and the sync. And then it's like, you can create sounds from like the mic and make them yourself and then turn them with the da 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 da. And then like, I'm learning all that. There's a, you're like going to school, trying to be a dad, not trying doing, being a dad. And then, and this is what I'm saying. It feels like you're going to school when you're watching those things. Right. Cause you're well, literally you know, learning something. You got to learn the tool. And That's... then after that, you need to have the space and time to like digest it so that you actually know how to use it. And then you have to, find creative space, which is very much different than an analytical learning space, right? It's like you learn how to type on the keyboard before you learn or before you're able to like, whatever, write a book or a blog. It's like, you have to learn how to type first or else you're going to be doing this, whatever. Yeah. You know? Or you learn Lack how to, you, you could learn how to like copy someone else's sentence or, sure. or you know, exactly. <clears throat> Absolutely. So like it's you're just, learning how to, if you were going to tie it to coffee, it's like, maybe you have, <clears throat> You know what tastes good. You have a palate. Right. You've like got an idea for what you'd like to see, but you've never used the roaster before, so there's no way you're going to dial in roast. Or you an espresso to, like, machine. you got to learn the equipment or a grinder. first. Like, yes. How do the basics work? Get comfortable yes. with that, and then you can start to exercise your vision during yeah. this little gap. And weirdly, this is far more complex and complicated than a roaster by itself and, a, and an espresso machine and a grinder. Like Having to learn all three of those are analog enough that I can learn them a lot quicker than I'll be learning this. Like I cannot learn this fast. I can learn it fast for an average human, I think, because I'm a quick <laughs> learner. But it's um, I'm it's cool. Like I watch the videos and people are like, yeah, I, I have a bunch of friends who get these things and they get really excited about them and they sell them three months later. And I'm like, oh, I know that's not going to be me because I can already tell that of all the things I've ever tried to experience in music, this is the one that's going to allow me to make. If I wanted to make an album, I could do it all with just this. And that is what I need to get started. Even if I add shit to it later, you can always do that. So I feel, I feel really good about that. And many people have made full albums on it. So it's just going to be a learning process. And I, 
I guess at the end of the day, it's all expression and relation relating to something that you vibe. And then I guess it is somewhat true that it's like what's going on in your life and how does the music somehow reflect the feelings you're having? So I guess there's that too, even though I always have a bunch of different kinds of feelings that fit a bunch of different kinds of music. Just like who's putting out the right shit for yeah, the right there's time. There's like a theme. Like always we're theme. always feeling different things, but there's a theme to certain yeah. eras for sure. I mean, I'm definitely uh, into more like techie, cinematic, gospel, hip hop. I mean, there's so much crossover, but I can enjoy so many different kinds of music. I mean, I like folky shit too, like that new Taylor Swift stuff that's been coming out. I didn't hear that yet. It's not new, new. It's the ones, her two albums she came out with over. over yeah, I've heard a little bit of that. Yeah. She's if you pretty, listen to those through. She's money. They're, she's like kind Taylor. of a genius. Like she's Swift. always been a genius, actually. I've like pretty much all of her albums. Dude, she's on fire. I, I, ever, even the old, I especially like the old country inspired stuff. Yeah, I mean, she's very good. She's just like so, it's like really good pop hooks, but it's got, to me, it feels like it's got a deeper level mm-hmm. where it's not like copy paste, like, oh, this is a hit no. song or whatever, even though so they are smart. hit songs. I'm yeah. like, oh, this is good stuff. No, nah, people don't give her enough credit. They yeah, just call her a pop star. Nah, she is legit smart artist. There's people like that. I mean, even those Katy Perry albums, like they're different. Katy Perry stuff was more fun and really good. Yeah. Katie, and like an influential part of our lives too. I like Katy Perry. She's more straightforward pop to me than yeah. Taylor Swift. Like I don't. I think she writes, but I don't think she writes all of her stuff. And I think Taylor writes all of her own words to all of her songs and comes up with most of the ideas and then brings people into collab and make them better. I mean, you can watch, you should just watch her documentary that's out on one of the things about how she made her most recent album. Who's got a documentary out? Katy Perry? Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift has a documentary. It's on how, yeah, it's like, because she, she recorded a lot of it in a cabin with one of the guys from The National. They're also a band that I just like love and I think is genius and they're like a thing. But um, it's kind of fun talking about music, actually. The National is so genius to me and people can't deal with them very much because his voice is so, and it's like, you have to get past it. What do you want? Like everybody sounds super normal or what? Well, yeah. And that's, I think why I think he's awesome is so different. Anyway, she wrote a lot of her album with one of the dudes from the, the national who writes most of their music too. I wonder if you could send some of your music out and have people like fuck with it. And I I was thinking about that. Like if I get it, like a certain amount of places and then hit up somebody and be like, Hey, you want to put some guitar to this or like, whatever it's like the postal service did it right they didn't even live in the same place and one person made something and sent it to the other person and then they added to it and sent it back and vice versa and then yeah it could be kind of sick i mean i'm pretty at this point i'm completely open because at the end of the day i've always been able to hear and never been able to put what i can hear in my head anywhere because i never got to go to music lessons i never got to learn an instrument i sang in the choir because it was free and part of school and I never had the money or the where anybody pushed me to to do anything like that no piano lessons no anything and I'm I'm definitely bummed that that I probably couldn't they probably couldn't tell that I wanted to do it maybe because people kids with ADD are like so all over the place dude but they also saw me listening to music nonstop all the time like I think there's like some weird parent parental disconnect where okay my dad's been a musician my whole life like (laughs) In my room at our house where we grew up is where we kept the piano. And he would play the piano every day. He's like a bass player, which is his main thing. Oh, this is a frustrating story. Um, (laughs) So he he was probably playing more piano than bass like when I was a kid. Okay. And all the time, just play piano. These really cool things. And there's some things that he plays like certain versions of it now that are close to what he played when I was a kid. And I was like... Play that thing that you used to play that had oh, that like crazy run. I remember it like crystal clear in my head. I can hear yeah. it, and he has no fucking clue like what I'm talking right. about. And I'm like, nah, that's close, but that's not it. Like, I wish he had it recorded. That's a sidebar. So he would he was playing music all the time, and then I'm getting you know pre junior high school or whatever, right. and I I started playing trumpet in first grade, and I was like, I really want to play the guitar. Like, can we go? I like I, like can I play a guitar? We go to the music store, I'd be looking at guitars, and I'm like, I want this guitar. And I don't know what the fuck happened, but nobody fucking bought me a guitar for like years. Like 
until I was in. So you were actually vocalizing it. Yeah. I was like, Hey, we should, you know, go yeah. looking at guitars. Like I want this. And like, it wasn't until my parents got divorced and my dad moved out that my mom bought me a guitar, which huh. makes no fucking sense. Cause right. my dad, like for my dad, like music is his life. And I don't understand the disconnect between like, and he had guitars, right? Yeah. Like you couldn't even just play one. I don't of understand what was that. That's the thing. It's like so frustrating to me and I don't get what the fuck was going on. Like I have no clue. I'm starting to, I think I know happening. a little bit of why my parents in where the way we were, the, the, the circles we were in were not really down with the kind of music that I was getting into. So like hip hop was not okay for the hyper vigilant Christian world that I lived in. So, mm -hmm. you know, like me getting into that already felt rebellious and I don't think super white parents in the middle of Chico really even understood that stuff. And obviously I don't understand it as much as others, but at the same time I was into it. So I was getting into the stuff that my parents were like not interested in at all. And then when I got into like my cover band, it was also like, Rage Against the Machine and Deftones and Tool and Blink-182, which was like the closest thing that my parents could handle is the Blink-182 style stuff, right? Yeah, it's a so little they more were probably, relatable. It's more suburban feel. Yeah, and then, yeah, I think they probably were like, I don't think that's the kind of music he should be playing or getting into, probably. They probably prejudged it a little bit. Because I do remember, I'd, I'm not good at drums, but I would be, I'd always like try to make beats. I could almost, I can but I could never do drums because it's a different thing and you have to take lessons. But I remember them always being annoyed that I was always like trying to do a thing and like make sounds and beats. And so it's like, man, it's all sitting there too. But I imagine my parents were probably way too self-conscious and the world back then was, if you're in those groups, right, it's just so full of shame if you do the wrong thing that they were like, oh no, we can't, is my, is my guess. Because we, my whole family just lived with shame over stuff my whole life. And so that's like a thing of the past too. I wonder if like the social norms were, <laughs> I guess you just get shamed and canceled on the internet now, which is different than having to actually like l walk around in the same circle, but like just outside of it. And being like my son is a musician and he's a total piece of trash. My, my son wants to rap and he's my super son, lame. <laughs> my son is a rapper. My son literally said that he could dance like Michael Jackson if he practiced. And I told him along with my, the rest of my family that you never could. I got video proof of that actually. That you actually <laughs> yeah. can't dance like Michael Jackson. If anybody wants to see the best 15 second video ever made, we made it. Yeah, it, I it exists. I posted that somewhere. Dude, it's hot. It's been a long time. I was very fast at that. Yeah, I was more limber. Anyway. That was more limber. That was actually, I could probably day. still do it. Yeah, music is very frustrating. It's super frustrating. I know. I saw. I, don't don't worry, bro. In, in enough time, I'll have us an intro song for this podcast, okay? Dude, it'll be like, good. <laughs> I mean, if you started, that's the thing, is there's a lot. This is. You mean make jingles for the answer? There's a long game to be had. Like, if you started doing something now, like, hopefully you're going to live for quite a long time after <laughs> this. So it's like... Things are going pretty good you know right what now. Because like you 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 uh, that's what I was thinking about yesterday. I was watching someone play the piano. I was like, man, if I started now, yeah, I'd be probably pretty good by the time I, mean, I was e like Even five years 60. if you were for real. Oh, for sure. You'd be like very good. You know? And that, I mean, very good. That's for real. If that was you put actually, 20 years into the piano, you'd be fucking very good. That was one of the things that I actually remember being super valuable from that Guy Kawasaki book that he mm, wrote, which yeah. is a book for old people, for yeah. sure, about doing old people things. Yeah, but putting in the time. But one of the things was learn to do something. I can't remember how he phrased it, but basically learn to do something that's not so super that you can kind of do forever yeah um yeah because certain things in your life are going to fade away so for me at some point like skateboarding is going to fade away like i'll sure. always hopefully be able to push down to the corner store and like yeah. grab a snack or whatever or you know do some basic stuff but I skate think, skating yeah. as i know it is n not going to be with me forever yeah it's just physically not going to happen i'm right. going to be 70 and i'll be like Cool. I just can't do that anymore. Right. Yeah. Um, but you'll have a nice, like you'd have on both sides, dude. <laughs> yeah. I'll have like a walker with <laughs> trucks on it. <laughs> <No, laughs> <you're laughs> <just, laughs> but there's, you know, you could play music forever. So yeah. if you start honing these skills that right. are going to just be with you for like, they aren't dependent on your 
physicality in your youth they're just going to get better with age it can be a really enriching experience i'm totally with you i mean the cool thing is is the stuff we know now that we didn't well that people didn't or they didn't take seriously is all the the weird things that they kind of worked through and starting things like CrossFit, right? It's like, Hey, you need to strengthen yourself so that you're always able to, to bend and pick up stuff and to squat and pick up stuff. And so people who actually take that shit seriously from here on out, essentially mm-hmm. are going to have the ability to do a lot of things that a lot of people stop doing, which oh, we'll is be better killer. old people than our, uh, <clears throat> than by, our by a long shot for sure. But then on the flip, you're totally right. Like my grandpa, he was, he got really good at creating, models right whether it's from wood or from cans but like hyper detailed so he'd get his book out of like a whatever f-18 hornet and he would get cans like coke cans beer cans whatever and you'd have to collect a certain amount to get it to be matching and then he'd make like down to the detail including like the missiles and everything all with them and prior to that it was wood and whittling and like the same thing like the red baron and all these things just historical stuff trains the sr-71 blackbird <clears throat> they're all that was like a thing that he got into he's like 92 now so he doesn't do any of that but he did it you know well into his 80s yeah <clears throat> awesome and that stuff is that's that's just good stuff like it's stuff that allows you to use your mind be creative be in a flow state and get i mean you're, you end up being proud of something that you put out there you're expressing yourself mm-hmm. right at the end of the day we i just am so uh, such a believer in create we're creative we have to be creating something it doesn't have to be a huge business like we're doing now it's just there's something about a human that it needs to create and that could be food that could be music that could be writing that could be you know we've ne- mentioned in many different whatever it is it's a thing and i guess music is just one of those universal connectors that it's like everybody listens to music so that that is really inspiring whenever you hear something that it's like you could put it on in a room and everybody in there is going to like go quiet because it comes on and that's pretty special and that is a thing i like i don't even know what to say dude that's the best part and i think i'm all the whole point. if you like this keep liking it tell your friends about tell it somebody yeah like that subscribe. was it it's the Great podcast mm. mix it up put it on a podcast tweak the levels with cat cloud sit. coffee anywhere cloud podcasts cloud. are served that's it at cat cloud coffee youtube and patreon instagram and shit we'll tell you about stuff and you tell us what you want it will be a hit it's a song